It's time for some more switch work. Welcome back to Geek Smart, and we're doing another video uh, set up our install, and that is on another light switch. They, these are the Leviton Smart Light Switches. Now, these are both dimming models. However, they do have one distinctive characteristic that separates the two. This is a standard Wi-Fi model. You can control this with your phone or with Alexa or with uh, Google Assistant, things like that. This one over here is a HomeKit model. So this one's gonna actually work with your HomePod or Siri or that integration. They don't make one that does both. Uh, so you definitely wanna choose which way you wanna do it and go from there. Now, the neat thing about these is that they can actually be integrated into a three-way switch capability as well. Uh, I will go into that actually in my full review. This specific set of video is just for installing this in a single gang outlet, or a, I should just say a, a one-way or a, a standard uh, switch, one switch outlet. Um, so we're gonna install, I think I'm just gonna install the standard Wi-Fi one. The, the installation will be the same on either of these, uh, but before we actually install them, let's bring the video in and take things out of the box and see what comes with it. Both of these products will come with the, basically the same stuff inside of it, uh, but we're just gonna cut the tape open on one of these guys, on the Wi-Fi model here. And what we get inside, it does come with white and looks like cream colored uh, switches. Uh, so you can see the dimmer uh, piece on the side and then the main switch itself. So that looks like it's fairly simple to actually replace if necessary. I'm going with white anyway. Uh, this one does not have wires sticking out the back. You actually wire the hardwired wires that are actually in the outlet to, directly to the switch. I actually like this better because that way we have less wires to deal with when we're putting it into, especially with it, you're putting it into a box that's shallow to begin with, like my boxes are. You will need a neutral wire for this one, but you can see where we have the uh, separate wires there for the three-way setup as well. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. If we actually look in here, they do have the information on how to get it set up with uh, the app. Now, of course, with the Wi-Fi model, you can still control it with your iPhone. It's just not gonna have full Siri integration uh, with, uh, with HomeKit. And they do have the actual instructions here as well, which we can go over if we want real quick. Um, what I'm gonna look for real quick, if I can find it. It's gotta be on that one. That's the, that's the, elect the uh, English one there is here. Okay, so here's what I was looking for. This is the basically the schematic of how everything lines up here for a standard line setup. This is going to be a three-way setup over here. We're doing a single pole setup. Uh, white wire is pretty obvious. The silver one is going to be for your, your neutral. Green is going to be for your ground. Uh, red is actually going to be for your load. And then your black is going to be for your line up to, your, to the actual... Uh, light or whatever you're controlling in this case light obviously uh, so that's how we're going to look for it that's how we're going to set everything up um, pretty easy to find out which one is the load and which one's the line and that's basically how the wires are housed in the actual switch itself uh, but from there we'll go from there and uh, get this thing set up as with any of these guys we have to head back to the electrical panel to kill power to the switch that we're going to be working at so we want to make sure that there is no electricity running to that switch we have to kill the breaker. So, again, my bedroom is here, number 23, which is this guy right here. That's this room. As soon as I switch this, the lights are going off. Okay, so we're here at my switch. I have both a flathead screwdriver and a Phillips screwdriver, and I also have my tester. This is basically just uh, to tell if I have power going, so I'm going to use that here in a moment once I get this uh, front cover off. Just a good double check always. Now I know for a fact because I've replaced this and back and forth several times. And well right now I have it. You can make sure you obviously test that to make sure nothing's good. Alright, let me get the those off to the side. Alright, so I'm gonna switch over to my Phillips driver now. And I'm probably going to speed some of this up, just so you know. Okay. 
sensor. So now I'm probably going to want to get out the tester, kick it on, just double check, uh, just to make sure you're good. If that went off, then you know real quick. Let's kick that back off, and we should be good to go. All right, so if we pull these guys out, I'm going to go ahead and remove these wires real quick, which are just screwed in place. So the ground wires over here. Doo -doo. We have the line and load wires over here. All right, so now we have the switch off. Uh, I'm gonna pull this a little bit here. And so, all right. So that's how everything came off. Um, we have, this is the neutral rod, so the switch that I had there did not require the neutral rod, so they're just basically uh, pinched together here. Uh, ground wires are all put together. This is a, an older setup, so they actually haven't grounded to the actual box, but they have actual ground wires coming down to the box. Funky way of doing that. Um, but then we're going to need to tap into these neutral wires as well. So I'm going to pull the, that guy off now. I'm going to grab a... a, a pliers and untwist those get those straightened back out and everything looks good from there so uh yay all right let me uh grab that okay so now we're set up what i did is i straightened out the neutral wires here so they're good and straight now everything is now straight good to go um i have my switch here now if you do need to remove this switch there's a spot here on both sides all you do is pinch those bottom pieces in and that's how you change the covers. So it's really easy to do. Uh, so it's not too difficult. Anybody can basically do that part. And uh, we want to make sure that it's in correctly. So you should be able to read Leviton up here. Obviously the stickers on the front that are currently on there that you will remove later. It tells you which way is up essentially. Um, the load wire, which is going to be over here. All I'm going to do is stick that in between. There's that basically... Uh, uh, plate in there that actually uh, squeezes the wire in between the actual switch piece and the plate with this guy here So we need to get that down there get that nice and tight and then we should be good there now the switch will actually hold itself And now we want to get all these other pieces in the right spot, too So the ground one doesn't have one of those you may actually need to take your pliers if You have those handy still and basically just rig the ground wire a little bit so we can actually get it around the, the ground piece down here so it actually holds in place a little bit better now i am not an electrician so i am not a professional at this i just learn as i go all right there we go we just want to make sure that it doesn't come off that's the big thing all right the red is going to be our line line coming in so we're going to connect that to the red one and I'll get a little bit closer here after I get all these in so you can actually take a peek at how I did it. And last is the neutral wire. Since I have both of them here, I'm just going to, I can actually put one on each side. That's how I'm actually going to do it, is just put one on each side of the, of the clip. And I'll show you that here when I get a little bit closer here in a minute. These are getting nice and stiff, so it's getting fun. I'll tell you what, to push these into place. Um, I'm going to reroute these a little bit, I think. Because they're kind of in the way. Coming from that one. There we go. Sorry if I am getting annoying. Trying not to. It's the only easy thing, easy thing about having the, the switches that have wires uh, is that the ones with just wires is that it's just easier to hook it up. But when you push everything back in, it, just, it gets harder then. So hopefully this comes into play here. Let me get the camera in here so you can actually see what's going on. So as you can see here, we have the, the neutrals. And as you can see how I was saying, I had two of them, one on top, one on bottom. Uh, the line load coming in. And then the uh, the ground wire on this side. The load wire is just on the opposite side. I'm not using the three-way connection wire. Now it's just about getting this set back in. And maybe I'll just keep the camera here. Sorry. Uh, you want to kind of be careful doing this. We don't want to mess the wires up too badly or anything like that, but they are just very firm, so it does take some pressure. And uh, I like to, once you get to a certain point at least, just start the screws so that it actually starts going in the right spot. 
I'm just gonna get those started. There we go, one on top, one on the bottom. And now we can just try to squeeze it in there. So it's it's gonna be fun. They're not easy to push back in there and you can't bend stuff. So take your time. Uh, these are very large um, pieces. So they're not you know near as small as the old switch. The old switch is not very deep where these are a lot deeper. So you can run into issue, issues that you may have to pull in and out. I'm going to work on this for a minute and then I'll be back. Maybe best if I just do this on camera. Uh, but it's just about working back and forth and pushing and bending those wires basically behind it. And don't just use the screws to pull it in. I found that actually just makes things worse than bending things. So, If you haven't noticed on my wall, uh, my box, that when it was actually installed before they even did the drywall, is crooked. And so no matter what I do, it's never perfectly flush. So don't think that's me. That's whoever did my the drywall here in my basement. So uh, Or the electrician, I should say, that did the, the work before the drywall was put on. So now that we have the switch in, we can use the, uh, the standard cover that came with your existing switch. So that's what we're going to use. So this is the cover that was already in place. I'm just redoing it because it doesn't come with a cover. Let me grab the right screwdriver, place it over it, and put the screws back in. Everything should line up because it is basically a standard. So the nice thing about the, the Leviton ones here are is that it's going to look very similar to your existing setup because you're going to use uh, the same covers that came with, well, your existing switches. Now, it actually just so happens that the switch that I had on here was also a Leviton, so interesting in that regard. All right, now we should be good to go. Let's go over and flip the light, uh, the the actual, um, what do you call it? <laughs> Circuit back on. And here goes nothing. That's a good sign, we don't have any blow up. So, I flipped the, light, the thing on, nothing really happened. The switch isn't working. Found out real quick that in my case, I'd, uh, both of my uh, wires coming in have uh, neutrals as well as grounds. One of them was line, one of them was load. I took a best guess based on what, how it was set up before. I was wrong, so I switched them. So my two blacks, I just basically undid them and, and sw swapped their places. So the one that I thought was the line was actually the load, and the other one that I thought was the load actually was the line. So. Now that I switched them, I'm going to put it back into place, and that's that's my best guess at least. I think that's exactly what was wrong, what was wrong with it. Um, so we're going to give this one more go. I'm just going to put this back into place how I had it, and we're going to head back over to the breaker. Okay, this time I'm just going to head over and flip the circuit breaker, and then hopefully it does something different. Maybe the lights come on automatically, we'll find out. Okay, well... There's a green light on it this time, so that's a good... I'm going to kick my light off. Hey, look at that. So, if at first you don't succeed, don't give up, because it was a stupid thing that I just switched them around. Oh, more in my case, in my defense, you couldn't tell which one was which, because uh, there was no markings, there was nothing labeled, and they both had the exact same amount of wires in it, so... Looks like it's uh, ready for setup, I would assume, is what the blinking green light is. So let's do the next setup and download the Decora Smart app. Or I guess it's the My Leviton app. Sorry, Decora Smart is the series. My Leviton app. Let's do that. So if we're in the App Store, we just search My Leviton. There it is. I already downloaded this, so I'm just going to hit the open button here and open up the app itself. I have not set this up myself yet. So it looks like we're going to set up for an account because I don't have... Now, if you already have a Leviton account, you just... Obviously log in, sign up, first name, last name, email, password, retype password, and then agree. I'm going to do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, now the password that you had to create does require a special character. That's what I found out real quick there. Thanks for registering. Verification has been sent to me. Please check my email, and then uh, then tip continue. So I'm going to go do that real quick. Okay, so I hit the link in the email. It said, great, continue. So now I'm back. I just went back into the app right after I did that. Say continue. Look like that. Schuster's residence. There it is. We're going to just call it. Sure. Continue. 
Location based? Sure, get my location. Why not? Location in Dubuque, that is correct. Let's add a device. Preparing. So if your Wi Fi has. Follow the installs. Okay. Let's hit continue. We're going to go into the Wi Fi of this iPhone to actually connect directly to it. So let's do that real quick. Wi Fi. There's the Leviton device. Let's connect directly to that. Once we're connected, we're just going to make sure we get the check mark. Swipe up, get over to the app, back into the app, connecting to it. Look at that automatically for me. So we're going to give that a minute. All right, so we're going to want to connect to Schuster. Now I got to put in my Wi Fi password. Let me do that real quick. Password's in. Sure, remember it. Hit continue. And now it's going to configure the device. So we'll give it a few moments. And there we go. All right. So let's see. You can name the device. Let's do that. Erase all this. This, just like the last one, studio. Call that the studio. Identify device. Okay. The green when you hit identify device, the green light on the switch actually flashes. All right, finish. Welcome to Leviton. Tells me how to use the app. Sounds good. Okay. Studio on. Off. Oh, there she goes. Let's kick it back on. Pretty awesome. Let's set the brightness to forty percent. Oh wow, yeah. See, my light overhead doesn't like doesn't do uh, dimming. I forgot about that. But obviously, the uh, I have one light in here that does do dimming and one that doesn't. So that's pretty interesting on that account. So brightness 100%. We can set that there. Um, in the in the meantime, I'm gonna, I might actually set this on a... I'll eventually probably move this switch to a different location, but it works really good for setup in this account. But uh, on my, I'll show you the, the one light that does dim. This set should dim. So let's set it to 25%. Oh yeah, she's dimming. 16%. 10%. Almost no, down to nothing. All right. 71. 100. Yep. So she dims real good. The other light I have over here does not dim. It is not a dimmable light, but it is what it is. While we have it here, we're going to get it set up with Alexa as well. We're going to open up the Amazon Alexa app for this specific part. And basically, we're going to enable the skill so it can actually control Leviton. So on the top, on the left, skills, and then we're going to want to search for spell it correctly, my Leviton, there it is right there, enable the skill, and now we're going to actually uh, log in with our Leviton information that we just set up a minute ago, let me do that real quick. So I click link your account. It just came to this page, hit done, and now it should be enabled. Yep, it is enabled. Uh, now we're going to want to do discover devices on our uh, Amazon Echo stuff. Alexa, discover devices. Starting discovery. This will take up to 20 seconds. If you haven't already, please enable the smart home skill for your smart device from the Alexa app. All right, let's head back to the app. Well, while I was moving the camera back over, it actually said it found one more device, one new device called Studio. If I want to control it, just say turn off Studio. So let's try that before I even do anything in here. Alexa, turn off Studio. Okay. Alexa, turn on Studio. Okay. Sorry about the uh, focusing there, but she already works uh, but let's go ahead and while we're here at least let's head over here to the smart home and see what it looks like in here because I have an old studio in here as well but there it is right there so if we actually tap on this it's on it's going off turn it back on so she works fine and that was quick and easy so the same thing can be true when we actually set up for a Google Home access as well. So if we hit the Google Home button, and this will allow us to access this from the Google Home devices, 
We'll hit the menu button here, hit home control. Under devices, we're gonna hit the little plus button down here. And here is where we're gonna actually scroll down. Excuse my thing. Click on the Leviton here, and we should have to log in with our Leviton access. We'll do that real quick, and I'll be right back. So once we log in with the account, should be good to go on that, and then we can assign a room, which studio, no room assigned. Let's assign a room. Oh, let me hit the edit button. It's just going to be in office, technically, or a custom room. How about that? We'll just call it studio. Sign to studio. Done. Got it. Good to go. So that is the full install on one of the Leviton dimming uh, switches. Of course, like you saw here, you're going to want to make sure that where you're placing it, the lights are dimmable, or you'll have to at least, if you want to keep the dimmable switch there, you'll just have to, I'll have to replace that with a dimmable light. Uh, in here, I want that at all, at all times, and so I'll probably have it on off there eventually, but that location just really works well for doing setup videos like this. So I'm eventually going to move that switch to a different location. But that said, Leviton does make these that are not dimmable as well. You don't have to get the dimmable models. Um, I didn't show you how you can actually change the dimmable on the switch, so let me do, I'll do that real quick, um, and then we'll come back here and we'll finish up. I don't know if you noticed, but when you turn it off or on, you can see the green lights there to tell you how, what level it's set to. But if you just push on the right-hand side, up or down, we can adjust the dimming level right here on the switch. Well, I hope that you install, you enjoyed that install video. Uh, the installation video part of the home kit, the only difference is going to be the smart feature setup is going to be slightly different. Uh, inside the box here, and I will open this real quick. Oh, I already did open it, didn't I? Look at that. Uh, the only difference is that this will actually have a home kit number that you lo you basically uh, go into the home app on Apple's iPhone or iPads and you just list link that number to your home kit and then you'll have full control over the light switch. So it's a little bit different than how uh, Amazon or Google does theirs. Uh, to be honest, I prefer the Amazon or Google setup. Um, not because the Apple's any harder, but it's just... It's more usable. More, obviously, this can work on multiple devices. Yes, I can control this with my iPhone, but I can't control it with my HomePod or other smart HomeKit devices. I just like having the capability of doing everything. I wish that they would make this into one that does all of it. Um, I don't know what the back end of that would look like. Uh, and maybe with uh, HomeKit 2.0, maybe they'll allow to be able to control this one. So you never know what's going to happen down the pipeline. But if you prefer... Amazon or the Echo control ability or the Google Assistant control ability, definitely go the Wi-Fi route. If you definitely want to have everything HomeKit, go the HomeKit route for now. So that said, pretty quick and easy to do that. And if you have any other questions or comments, post those below. Subscribe to the channel. Share the video. Share this video as much as you can. I appreciate it. And let me know what you think. Um, so far, I'm pleasantly surprised by it, but I will put, when I actually have my full reviews of these guys, I will put links down below. And I probably will, may actually have a review on each of these. I don't know if I'll combine the reviews uh, like I did the setup because the setup is essentially the same thing with slight variations for the home kit setup. So, But if anything else comes up, let me know. Otherwise, we'll catch you on a future video. Thanks for tuning in.